The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Big cities, big names, big legacies, big sisters and brothers, big ideas, big expectations. Big stage. Big results. That's the Big East way. Well, good evening and welcome to Mulaney Gym here inside Alumni Hall in Providence, home of the Providence College Friars as they get set to take on the Butler Bulldogs in Big East women's basketball action. I'm Mike Mancuso, joined tonight by Megan Caffrey. And Megan, time to take a look at the starting lineups for tonight's game. We'll begin with the visitors from Butler. And really no surprises in the starting lineup tonight for head coach Kurt Godlewski, as they'll be starting Genesis Parker, Umu Toure, Catherine Strong, Shea Bry, and of course one of the most talented players in the Big East, Kristen Spoyer, who's just been red hot as of late. Kristen Spoyer, she's the Big East player of the week after scoring 30 points in the Dogs game against Marquette. She had 23 of their first 25 points. She had just a spectacular weekend. Now the Friars are without a couple of players, most notably Olivia Orlando and Kira Spiewak in street clothes tonight. They will not be playing for coach Jim Crowley and he's had to make a couple of adjustments with their starting lineup. Most notably Erlette Scott getting her fourth start of the season and Heaven Bristow making just her second career start. She joins the usual culprits at Kayla Webb and Mary Bashville. Alyssa Geary also pressed into starting action as well. Friars in the home whites, black numerals. They'll be moving from left to right across your screen. They win the opening tip against the black and white clad Butler Bulldogs. As the Friars still looking for that elusive first Big East win of the season. Not what they're looking for there. A turnover as Spoyer able to come away with the steal. And on the other way, losing the handle was Umu Torre. The ball still with the Bulldogs. Excellent defensive possession there by the Dogs. Mike Kristen Spoyer just got in that lane and was able to get that steal. The Bulldogs coming in averaging 64.4 points per game. Turn it over there. Evan Bristow, the freshman out of Brooklyn, New York. Part of that New York flavor to this Providence side. We'll talk about that as this one goes on. And here's Alyssa Geary, part of the two Twin Towers for the Friars, along with Mary Baskerville, the reigning Big East Freshman of the Year. Here's Bristow putting up the runner, won't go. And coming down with the rebound that time was Cat Strong. Bulldogs will be patient with it. Love to run more deliberate sets. A lot of screen action in that time. Not reading it well with Shea Bry. Another turnover for the Bulldogs. Shea just didn't even, it looked like as if she just wasn't ready for that pass. She was not even looking in the direction of Genesis Parker. So a little bit of a miscommunication there. Well, two turnovers so far for the Bulldogs. One for the Friars as we're still scoreless here in Friartown. Here's Kayla Webb setting up on the perimeter. Had to pull up her dribble now for Baskerville. Skips it along for Scott in the lane. Quick ball movement here for the Friars. Alyssa Geary misses the bunny and can't come up with the offensive board as getting in her way was Umu Torre. Great effort by Geary there to go after that offensive board, but just wasn't there under the bucket quite enough. Torre trying to get to the rim, puts up a wild one, won't go. Heaven Bristow able to tap it to herself. A nice defensive board that time for the freshman. Merlette Scott and the Friars looking for the first point of the game. They go to Baskerville. She can't connect. And back the other way now comes Genesis Parker. Well, Mike, we knew this would be a little bit of a defensive battle coming into tonight, and so far it hasn't disappointed. Melissa Geary with the block that time as Parker tried to sneak past her. Kayla Webb now leaving it for Geary. Flips it inside for Baskerville, but tipped aside by Strong. 
And then kicked out of bounds by Spoyer. Both teams struggling here to just put anything together on the offensive end. It just looks like a little bit of mistimed, sloppy passes. They're not as strong with direction, really force behind those passes. That's something that both of these offensive are going to have to clean up. Yeah, Turnover is a big issue mm. for both teams in their last outing. Butler with 26 against DePaul. The Friars with 23 in the big loss to Seton Hall. So taking care of the basketball, a huge priority according to both coaches here tonight. Here's Erlet Scott sending it across for Webb. Three ball on the way, and that one rims out. Baskerville the rebound, and it's going to stay with the Friars. This is his last touch by Butler. Great effort by Baskerville there underneath to box out a little bit, get that offensive board, and give your, your team another opportunity. Of course, very important for Mary Baskerville to stay out of foul trouble, mm -hmm. and sometimes you see her pick some of those up when going for those offensive rebounds. Always in the battle inside the paint. Scott, pass partially deflected, but Geary's still able to get a handle to it. Tricky little move with a sidestep that time, and finally we have our first points of the night. <laughs> Finally, and Geary was saying, no way I'm driving all the way home for this one. Real aggressive effort right there. Geary, who comes in averaging just under six points per game. That number dips a little bit in conference play to about four. The Friars are going to need her to get hot, especially with Orlando and Spiewak out tonight. The kickball will keep it with the Bulldogs with 6.55 left here in the first quarter. I think, Mike, it's one of the talking points when you look at this Providence team that they are young, but tonight you're really seeing it there. Their starting lineup is all younger players. You've got all sophomores, one freshman starting for them. Yeah, something that Coach Crowley talked about with us earlier tonight, just the youth factor on this team. They're still trying to find themselves as the three ball won't go that time for Strong and another strong offense or excuse me, defensive rebound for the Friars. Erlet Scott, long skip pass that time for Webb. They go inside to Geary. She's quickly met that time by Bry. Pass deflected and coming up with it. Again, another steal. This time it was Nida Casares. Spoyer trying to connect from downtown. Won't go. Long rebound into the hands of Webb. So far, Butler struggling from the field at 0 for 4 on the night. Friars not much better, though, at one of six. A lot of contact in the paint that time. Going down was Erlet Scott. We'll see who they get for the foul. As we take a look at head coach Kurt Godlewski, last year's Big East Coach of the Year. As the Bulldogs went 23 and 10, 11 and 7 in the conference, of course, made the third round of the WNIT, as did the Friars. here for Erlet Scott won't go coming down with it with Shea Bry. Now Upe Atuso will slow things down as Butler goes to work on the offensive end still looking for its first points of the night. Caceres can't connect Baskerville the rebound long outlet pass is a little low for Scott to handle and it's another turnover for Providence. There's a look at head coach Jim Crowley now in his fourth season. Earlier this year, getting his 300th career win against UMass back on November 9th. And look at some of the keys he talked about scoring off turnovers, really mm -hmm. moving the ball on the offensive end, and you got to stop Kristen Spoyer. Of course, she's probably number one <laughs> in everybody's scouting report when you play Butler. <laughs> and I think, though, when you're looking at both of these teams, one thing, and we've already been seeing it on both their offensive possessions, are they want to work this shot clock. They're not higher scoring teams. Stepping on the sideline that time, Atuso. Another turnover for Butler. And Megan, at this point in the game, already turnover is an issue for both sides. Four, and we're not even halfway through the first mm -hmm. quarter. And only with one bucket to show for it all. Now in for the Friars, Fatima Lee, freshman out of Queens, New York. Again, part of that. New York edge that Coach Crowley's brought in here to Friartown. Here's Alyssa Geary. Leaves it outside for Lee. She'll drive baseline. Met by Spolier and has it tipped to Andrea Cooper and then a foul on the inside. Avoided it. Seemed like she was holding onto it for a long time there. 
just outside of the paint. Great job by Cooper coming in there to try and help her, but she was, she just held onto it a little bit too long. So with 4.55 left here in the first quarter, timeout on the floor will step aside as well. But the Friars leading this one 2 nothing right here on the Big East Digital Network, presented by So5. You're watching Butler Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you people yeah. can tell me to stop. Uh. exactly a year ago. It's the 14th all-time meeting with Butler holding the all-time series advantage, but it has been a close battle in each of the last three meetings. It's always been really competitive between these two teams, and, and partially because they do play pretty similarly to one another. They have similar styles in that sense, but Mike, I swear, if we're going to go to triple overtime tonight, I need another cup of coffee, because I don't know if I have it in me. I second that. We'll see if we can get someone to help us out with that, but... Friars coming out of the timeout. Looks like they're mixing up the lineup again. Just a touch. They brought in Sophia Wittmeyer, the sophomore from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. And with some of these injuries, we've seen her getting more and more minutes, especially in the last couple of games, as we now have Andrea Cooper at the line shooting two. A junior from Edmond, Oklahoma. He struggled a little bit at the line. But looked pretty good on that first one. And Mike, I think it's significant as we're seeing switches go through with Providence that this team is injured, they're young, they're still trying to figure themselves out. They don't know exactly what their identity identity is quite yet. And the one thing that Coach Crowley made clear to me earlier tonight was that, you know, there's no sense of panic yet. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're still working hard in practice. You know, you can see the team unity, so they're not freaking out at being 0-7 in the Big East. But they also know that you know, at some point they got to turn things around. Mm -hmm. So good defensive stand here for the Friars. Leads to a three-point attempt for Butler. And that one rattles home for Ulu Torre. And then we have a foul after the fact. It looks like it's going to go against Butler. And we'll see who gets charged with it. for the official indication, but looks like it's going to be Kristen Spolier who picked it up, that collision inside the paint. Of course, Butler does not want to lose her at any point in this game as the Friars throw it away. A two-so goes in all alone, and all of a sudden, Butler with a 5-4 lead. How about a two-so? One thing that you look at her and you are immediately able to pick up is that she is aggressive, especially on defense. She takes a lot of pride in her defense. Friars now were able to get through that press as they go to Cooper on the inside, nearly walked, and in fact she did when she picked up that pivot foot as the Butler defense able to collapse in on her. Friars will bring back in Mary Baskerville and Erlette Scott. Notice Mary Basco getting a little bit of extra rest there as she came out during the media timeout. And something Coach Crowley felt was important, find those little moments where he can maybe get his star sophomore 
little bit of rest on her, picking up those fouls when she gets tired. And, and that's where you see when players are getting tired, especially when you are younger, you are going to make some more, not lazy mistakes, but, but mistakes that you just wouldn't make if you're getting some more rest in you and you're able to come off the bench with some fresh legs. Three-pointer will not fall for Upea Tuso. Go to the Friars as they bring in Chanel Williams, one of their usual starting point guards. Williams coming off the bench here tonight. So again, Coach Holly trying to mix up some of these lineups, trying to find that magical combination that's going to work. Williams, when she's at her best, one of the fastest players in the Big East, especially with the ball. She'll push it to the corner. Kayla Webb for three, won't go, gets her own rebound. And then got popped by a two-so, but no call there in her favor. They're going to get Webb for the travel. You have to appre appreciate her execution on that. She put the shot up immediately, realized there needs to be somebody there to get the rebound, went in, got her own rebound, and that is something that you have to be happy to see. And I know the Friars looking for Webb to be a little bit more aggressive on the offensive end, knowing that she's going to have to be one of those primary scorers. Here's Spolier, a very determined look on her face that time, able to get to the rim and will be shooting two. And that's another area where Coach Crowley talked to us about having to keep Butler off the free throw line. They are one of the best teams in the nation when it comes to free throws made. In fact, ninth in all of NCAA right now with 268 made free throws coming into tonight. And Spolier leading the charge for them, 79%. That was her 104th made free throw this season. And Exxon Bolt. Butler now with its largest lead of the night. Erlen Scott able to lift it over Spolier that time. Good ball movement by the Friars. Leads to an easy bucket for Heaven Bristow. Excellent job by the Friars right there. Couple of passes, nice and easy bucket. They looked calm, cool, and composed in that. I think that was the key. Cool, <laughs> calm, and composed. As they were able to break that press. Scramble for the ball in the lane and coming up with it, saying, look what I found here with Shea Bry. An easy bucket for her. <laughs> Chanel Williams leading the charge now for Providence. Geary will keep it up high. And it goes for Baskerville. Now here's Scott. Geary, who does have a pretty good handle for her size. As they find Scott in the corner. Now Williams down to seven on the shot clock. Got back for Williams. Now she's going to have to get creative here. And a shot clock violation just as Alyssa Geary was getting that shot off. Just a little too late in making something happen there. You, you did see it, though. They were working, trying to get it in underneath, but just ran out of time on that possession. And now the question is, did she get it off in time? As the officials are going to talk things over as Ed Siglaski and Brian Burnett are going to say, nope. And it, it did look to the naked eye, at least for me, that she was just a hair late in releasing that shot. It did look it, like it was just still in her hands a little bit as it was going off. But you got to appreciate the officials, at least talking it over. Even if it's for 10 seconds, just make sure that they're all on the same page. And here come the Bulldogs now, up by three. Genesis Parker with the handle as they work it inside. Strong, trying to back down Baskerville. Tough shot, definitely redirected by Baskerville, and then Baskerville the rebound. Doing it all without picking up a foul, the most important part of that sequence for Providence. Chanel Williams again quarterbacking his Friar squad. Baskerville back up top now for Scott, and that one telegraphed, reading it all the way was Genesis Parker, and that leads to another easy bucket. Talk about an athlete there. Genesis Parker really can just read the floor really well, puts her hand in there, and finishes it, finishes it off. And that's someone that Coach Godlevsky was talking to us about that felt could have an impact on this game and was kind of ready to kind of break out, step up in this kind of situation. Another break here is both teams taking advantage of making some early substitutions with a minute left here in the first quarter. After a slow start, Butler, its largest lead of the night at five. 
Bray looking for Spoyer inside. Double team and then an offensive foul. And all of a sudden, Megan, Spoyer's got two personals. That's something that you really want to be careful with there if you're Kristen Spoyer. She is aggressive. She, she's always going to try and do whatever she can to make the play for her team, but you do need to be careful right there. So two fouls on the offensive end for Kristen Spoyer. She'll take a seat for the remainder of this quarter. Coming in for her was Umu Torre. As the Friars try to get a couple points back, Erlet Scott and up top for Williams. Trying to get someone to set a screen. He was able to get it back to Scott. Long skip pass comes for Williams, trying to penetrate. The feed was there for Andrea Cooper, but just a touch low. You could see she was looking for her there. She, she had such a great ability to drive to the basket, but sometimes you, you want to see her look for the open player just a hair earlier to get a better touch on that. The shot clock off here for the remainder of the quarter. As Parker takes a look up at the clock. She'll probably go with about 10 seconds. Off to the race as she goes. Torre back out for Parker. Three ball on the way, no good, but a foul on Chanel Williams. And that's going to put a look of disgust on the face of Coach Crowley as time winding down. And didn't look to be a good shot either. You can kind of see right from the release it wasn't going to go. But now Parker a chance at the line to hit three. And there it was, clear as day. Williams connecting with the body. Parker on the season, 64% free throw shooter. The number dips down a little bit more in Big East play, down into the 50s. And the first one off the mark. Ellen Ross now in for Butler as well. A sophomore out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Second one from Parker is good. Now the Bulldogs have the Friars doubled up. Parker with three points. Can she make it four? She does. The Friars will have to hurry to get one off. Cooper from way outside doesn't go. Oh, so close there as time expired. It looked like she could have had it there for a second. It did, <laughs> you know, and she uh, does not shoot the three ball. That's only her second three-pointer attempted this season. <laughs> so a break in the action here for the quick intermission at the end of 10 minutes. It's Butler 13, Providence 6. We'll be back with more right here on the Big East Digital Network presented by SoFi. You're watching Providence Women's Basketball on Big East Digital Network. We're all in, all together, great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're going to work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? We gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Welcome back to Mulaney Gym here inside Alumni Hall. Mike Van Guso alongside Megan Caffrey. Very glad you could join us here for tonight's game. It's Butler out to that 13-6 lead. And you know, one of the players that has been stepping up as of late has been a freshman for the Bulldogs in Umu Torre. 
Yeah, Umu, you can just see that she's getting more comfortable in this offense. She actually got into the starting lineup in the dogs game against Ohio. And since then, you can see her little by little getting more comfortable, getting composed, and talking with some of the other classmen, and talking with actually Christian Spolier before the game, she was speaking to her ability to just, you know, things are slowing down for Umu a little bit on the floor. And you can see that in her play. Yeah, Coach Gablowski telling us. Instinct for the ball's got great length, able to come up with those deflections in the lane and, and see why she's one of the team leaders in steals and block shots. Here's Baskerville getting her first bucket of the night. And boy, did the Friars need that as they've been in a little bit of a rut on the offensive end. Some much needed points for their star. Yeah, if you're head coach Jim Crowley, that is a sight that you definitely want to see. You want to see Mir get a little bit more involved here, get those buckets underneath. It's going to be tough for the Friars to have any kind of success when Baskerville and Webb had zero points through that first quarter. Andrea Cooper adding a little spark here tonight as she comes up with the steal. Friars a chance now from the perimeter. Kayla Webb, and that one again just rimming out. Rebound to, who of course, Kumu Torre getting it done. Here's Bry. And they'll reset with Parker. Torre now works it against Cooper. A little handoff for Parker. And Spoyer still out with the two fouls, and gonna get a foul on Alyssa Geary, it looks like. And again, with already a couple of players out tonight for the Friars, can't afford those type of fouls. It looks like Butler will bring back in both Naide Caceres and also Upe Atuso. So that was Geary's first foul of the night. Fresh 20 seconds here for the Bulldogs. Parker able to deliver it in to Bry. Friars very active hands on the defensive end. Torre for three, won't go. Geary the rebound. She'll give way to Erlet Scott. Webb now for three. Again, just a little bit short that time. And that's where on the offensive end, those Friars need to get underneath, start boxing out to try and get those rebounds. Nobody was going up for that rebound. Oh, talk about a rejection. Mary Baskerville against Genesis Parker. Does not my house. And on the other end, would have had the layup, but a charge before that is doing a nice job getting back with Shea Bry to absorb that contact from Erlette Scott. You could see from Mary Baskerville on that other end. She's got the height. She's 6'3". She does not want to let you get those, sh those shots off. It's not just the height. It's the movement mm -hmm. of the feet, the arms, the position. Something she's gotten even better and better at as her career has gone on. Last year set a freshman record here at Providence for blocks in a season. And already again, the leader in the Big East in that department. So Webb got run over. Butler looking for its first points of the quarter, and they'll get them. Thanks to that shot from Caceres. Began her career at Maine, but has become quite a force at Butler. It's Butler, a little touch off the glass. That backboard is there to help you and use it all you want to, is what I always say. You just feel that confidence growing for mm -hmm. Butler and the Friars here on the offensive end in this quarter so far. Oh, a tricky pass from Caceres, but unable to finish was Bry. See if the Friars can capitalize. Kayla Webb has Geary on the outside. She does have this range, and there she proves it. Puts up the three fingers as well. And the Friars right back in this one. You can just sense and you can feel their confidence starting to build back up and the mood starting to change in here a little bit, Mike. Well, the one thing Coach Crowley talked to us about as well was how they just need to shoot the ball. Don't overthink it. Simplify, get in rhythm. We saw that out of Geary last time down the floor as Baskerville is able to alter that shot once again. Fires chance to tie or take the lead. Here's Webb for three. Got it. And Mike, to your point about that, that's what you have when you have a young team. You need to get that confidence to build up so that you can just take those shots in rhythm and not think too much into things when you are behind, because when you're playing like this and the shots just start to fall. Coach Godlowski uh, looking over to his bench saying, okay, Kristen, you got to get over there. She's ready to check in at the next opportunity for the Bulldogs, but we'll have to be extra careful. 
Tuso. Got Geary up in the air, able to kick it out now for Caceres. Three ball will not go. Geary another rebound. The Friars doing a nice job utilizing their one of their assets. And that's their size on the inside with Baskerville and Geary. Unfortunately, that pass off the mark and tipped out of bounds. Coming right at us is Shea Bry, able to get a hand on it, but not quite to it. Yeah, it's coming over to us. You want to get in there. <laughs> Had to make sure my coffee was protected. First things first. So here we go. The most important of the things. <laughs> Can't have that uh, going down this early. So Kayla Webb now in the Friars looking to extend their lead. Geary in some trouble in the corner. And Fatima Lee just wasn't ready for the pass. Genesis Parker comes up with the loose ball. What a great defensive possession by the Dogs, though. Some double teaming in there, creating some anxiety a little bit from the Providence Friars on that end. Spoyer thought about three, now gives it up to Parker. She'll launch the trifecta, won't go. Evan Bristow the rebound. And again, the Friars' size definitely having an impact on this game. As Fatima Lee will run the point. Already the third Friar we've seen run the point tonight. We've seen Arlette Scott, we've seen Chanel Williams, and now Fatima Lee. Here's Kayla Webb, pulls up for the jumper. A little strong, Geary able to tip it to herself. She was able to get the best of Caceres and a fresh possession for the Friars. Quick ball movement, Bristow moved a little bit early, did the freshman. It looks like Butler will go to the bench again. Upe Atuso back in. Out goes Parker for a quick rest. Tuso now, work against Lee. Spoyer, picked up by Geary out high. Losing the handle, she just started ping-ponging around different priors. Referees are letting them play tonight. They are, that is big east to a T, get that contact in there. Around it comes now for Webb. Already past the midway point of the second quarter, Bristow. And her pass deflected out of bounds by Shea Bry. That'll bring us to a timeout on the floor. So we'll step aside as well. With the Friars leading this one 16-15. We'll be back with more Big East women's basketball action right here on Big East Digital Network. Presented by SoFi. You're watching Butler Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. All right, we gotta be all in. All in, all right? We gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Big cities, big names, big legacies, big sisters and brothers, big ideas, big expectations, big stage, big results. That's the Big East way. Tight one here in Friar Town, midway through the second quarter. Mike Nagel so alongside Megan Caffrey. The Friars uh, holding up on a 10-2 run here in the second quarter. Of course, uh, by the end of this week, we'll be midway through the Big East season, if you can believe that, as we look ahead towards the Big East Women's Basketball Tournament again at the Wintrust Arena team in Chicago, March 6th through the 9th. Be sure to get your tickets now. You can just simply go to BigEast.com slash tickets. And obviously right now DePaul kind of beating all comers, but everyone below that has got to be considered in the mix. Oh, Mike, we are going to see a lot of movement after this weekend. We're reaching the halfway point of conference play this weekend, and a lot of teams who are tied in the standings 
are playing one another and are making movements. So we'll see. It's going to be exciting to look at where the standings are at come Monday morning. Well, Butler coming into this one in a three-way tie for fifth. So this is a, an important game for both sides. Again, Providence you know, in last right now in the Big East at 0-7, but certainly plenty of games left to, to get right back in it. And they've been in pretty much every game outside of that Seton Hall one in their last outing. And to add to that, Mike Marquette won earlier today, so they're already making some moves there. And they were able to knock off Georgetown in a, an afternoon clash. An empty trip for Providence, and an empty one for Butler as well, coming out of the timeout. As both defenses extremely stingy here tonight. Alyssa Geary keeping that ball up high. Fatima Lee now round for Bristow. Puts up the floater and does not get the friendly roll this time. A two so will hold up at center court. Looks over to the bench for the play. And now we'll direct traffic. Caceres. And now Spolier has been in some foul trouble here tonight with two personals already. She'll launch the three. And smooth as silk, <laughs> Spolier bombs away. How <laughs> nice was that? A little one dribble, sidestep, up and at it. So fluid on that stroke. Again, she could do it on the inside, outside, really all over. She's been tremendous this season. Geary on the other end with the left hand. Putting on a show in the paint. And that's one of the strong parts of her game. She is a really good post player. She's got the height. One thing, though, in talking to Geary that she's been getting more confident at is her three-point game. She takes a lot more three-pointers this year than she did last year. Little runner will not fall for Caceres, but Spoyer able to get the initial rebound. And an extra life here for the Bulldogs. Three ball off the mark that time. It was almost screened by her own player that time. Mm -hmm. Didn't have a clean look, and the Friar is able to track down the loose ball. Yeah, and just no black jerseys underneath the bucket at all for that rebound. Around it goes for Webb. She'll be picked up by Spoyer. And again, Spoyer, those quick hands. Almost able to knock it away. Geary, though, the turnover. Spolier now a three-on-one break. Looking for the contact with Spolier, and she's not happy, saying, what do I have to do? But teammate was there to clean it up. Here's another look. Yeah. I think she has a case. She, yeah, I think so. <laughs> and, you know, it, it's always so tough in those plays when you've got the height difference, so she's going up. Geary's probably got about four or five inches on her. Fortunately for her, Upe Atuso was there to collect the rebound and lay it in. And lead back to the Bulldogs. So wholesale substitutions here for the Friars. They get Baskerville back in, Chanel Williams, and our first look tonight at Lauren Sampson, the freshman from Waltham, Massachusetts. Just appearing in her sixth game as a Friar. Came in kind of as a three-point shooter, so we'll see if she can get open on the perimeter. Here's Williams now to the corner. Lee for three. Won't go. The Friars now just two of nine from beyond the arc. Tuso trying to penetrate. What a little speed burst that time. Just came up a little bit short. Lee now the other way. Sampson. Around for Williams. She'll float it over to Lee. Sampson once again, this time met by a Tuso. Williams and the Friars really know where to go as Butler sealing them off in every direction. Here's Sampson trying to find some space. Lee for three. And that won't go. Rebound by Toure. Another solid defensive stand. Great defensive stand by Butler. Caceres looking over her options. Decides to go with Bry. Inside Toure. Again, lots of contact, but Torre somehow able to find a way. What a great job by Torre. She put the ball on the ground, worked through two defenders, kind of just threw her body up there a little bit and was able to get it in. Friars trying to respond. They go inside to Baskerville, who's hit by a pair of Bulldogs. We'll see which one they get. Could be Torre, could be Bry. Either way, it'll be Baskerville at the line. Looks like Bry is going to pick up the personal. And we keep seeing Lauren Sampson. It, it looks like she's looking to potentially take those three pointers, but she might just not have that confidence in there quite yet. She's got she's had a couple of open looks, but she just hasn't taken it and gone for a pass instead. 
Yeah, she's only taken 11 shots in her career, but is four for nine from beyond the arc. She is one of those three-point specialists when they can find a way to get her open. Again, Coach Crowley talking to us about just ball movement, you know, mm -hmm. that extra pass, moving off the ball, getting people where they could shoot in rhythm. Mm -hmm. Such a key for this Providence side as Baskerville connects on both free throws. And an important thing off of that is getting good shots off. When you're working the shot clock, getting a lot of movement, you want to take good shots. Speaking of a good shot, good ball movement there by the Bulldogs. Bry able to come up with the triple. Final 30 seconds of the second quarter. Got a six second differential game clock and shot clock here. Samson again trying to load up that three ball. Williams looks to the bench for the play. He'll probably wait till about nine or 10 seconds on the shot clock and already at that mark. Friars finally get in position. Williams trying to rifle it into Baskerville. Big collision in the lane. And the Friars aren't going to get the shot off. Another shot clock violation. And that's just, you see them, they're working for it, but sometimes you just need to start executing the play a little bit earlier in that shot clock and not try and wear it down too much. So Butler will have 6.3 seconds to go the length of the floor. Amelia Sexton now in the game as well as Parker brings it up ahead. Leaves it out for Spolier and for three, won't go. Andrea Cooper, though, absorbing a lot of contact. It's very gimpy getting up as Parker ran into her. And that's the last thing the Friars need is another injury. Coach Crowley wondering where was the offensive foul as they head into the locker room. Andrea Cooper happened to be helped off by multiple teammates. And she's going right to the trainer's room. Butler, though, with a five-point lead here at the break, will step aside and be back. More from the half here in Friartown, right here on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi. You're watching Providence Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you people yeah. can tell me to stop. Uh. We're all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're going to work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. 
When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Welcome back to Mulaney Gym here inside Alumni Hall in Providence. We are at the half, 20 minutes in the books, and a five-point lead for the visiting Bulldogs of Butler. And really a key matchup in the Big East for both sides as Butler trying to keep pace as they were tied for fifth coming into this one. And now it's time to take a look kind of at the week that was. Let's take a look at some of the honors that were handed out for the outstanding performances last weekend in Big East play. You know, the honor roll is full of uh, some of the usual names we've seen over the course of this season. Shantae Stonewall, Altia Anderson, Alyssa Halston, Shadeem Samuels, and Mary Gadeka. Uh, really just a tremendous quintet right there. And, and names just like what you're saying, Mike, we have seen these names before. Specifically, you look at Mary Gadeka from Villanova. They had a big win over Georgetown last weekend. They just had that one game. And then you look at the New York swing with the St. John's and Seton Hall players, both of those teams getting important wins. Yeah, Shadeen Samuels and the, the Pirates of Seton Hall really putting a hurt on the Friars in their last outing as they were able to knock off Providence 97-55. And of course, Big East Player of the Week and Freshman of the Week. Well, we're seeing the uh, Big East Player of the Week here tonight. Kristen Spoilers got off to a tough start, but boy, did she have a heck of a week last week. And of course, the Freshman of the Week, well, they might as well just almost rename it the Maddie Seegers <laughs> Award this year. Maddie Seegers has come into this league and is just performing at a level that is unbeknownst to anyone else. And talking with Bill the head coach, Eric Breda, he just gets really excited in talking about her. And, and she's just someone who's she's an offensive stud who just reads offense and is natural, has all these natural offensive abilities. Yeah, she is just with a tremendous force, just like a whirlwind out there on the floor. No time for us to step aside once again. We'll be back with more from the half here in Providence. This is Big East Women's Basketball Action on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi. We're all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. And welcome back once again to Friar Town. At the break, the Bulldogs, 25-20 lead over the home side. And this weekend marks the fourth edition of Fox College Basketball All Access. This Sunday at 6.30 on FS1, Seton Hall will take on St. John's at Walsh Gym. And both head coaches will be mic'd up for the duration of the limited commercial production. Fox Sports will also take viewers inside huddles into the locker room pre and post game and much more. This week on Big East Fast Break, our own Megan Caffrey caught up with Tony Bazella and Joe Tartamella, head coaches of Seton Hall and St. John on their all-access matchup that's coming up. Ahead of Sunday's St. John's Seton Hall All Access game on FS1 at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, I'm joined with the head coaches of both of those teams, Johnny's head coach Joe Tartamella and Pirates head coach Tony Bazella. Coach B, Coach T, you guys have both coached in an All Access game before. What is this experience like? Go ahead, Tony. It is um, it's a little nerve-wracking, to be honest with you. You're always thinking of, of what not to say as opposed to what to say, to be honest with you. Um, but it's a great experience, and I think it gives the viewers a tremendous opportunity to see what coaching is really like, you know, it, it, the timeouts, the strategy during the game, um, you know, halftime, pregame. Um, I think it's just a great experience. Yeah, I, I think probably uh, four years ago or three years ago, whenever we both agreed to do the first one ever, uh, I'm not sure we probably knew what we were getting into at that time, but uh, certainly it was an, uh, an exciting um, game to be a part of. It's an interesting game as a coach because you're really mindful of kind of what you're saying and what you're doing. But I think at the end of the day, you realize you got to just um, coach the way you would coach any other game. And 
Um, I feel a little bit better about that than I probably did in the first game uh, that we did years ago. Um, and then just seeing it done over time. But it's, um, it's a great way to give exposure to the game. And, and I think um, it's only going to continue to get better and give fans more access. And that seems to be what, um, you know, what, the new wave of where things have been going with uh, how to interact with the game and how to be uh, or how to show different sides of, uh, of game like situations to fans. Coach Tarmella, you mentioned it right there. You and Coach Bazella were the first to coach in this. Back in 2016, you guys had the first all-access game. How cool is it to see how much this has gotten a lot of traction that now the men's side of things are doing it as well? I think it's great. I mean, they came to both of us with the idea, and, uh, you know, we were happy to do it. I think we're both a little probably hesitant in ways, but um, – to see that it's still going on means that we, we did something right and they did something right. And I know the people at Fox and uh, Steve Shear especially has done a great job in being able to promote it. And um, so to watch now some of the men's coaches and they've probably asked Tony and I both about our experience with it before they've done it. So, um, you know, I think it's pretty, pretty amazing to, to see. And uh, again, I think it gives different coaches uh, or fans different views of the coaches that they follow and the programs that they follow. Um, and, you know, and I think it brings a different dimension to how you watch a game. So uh, it, it's been exciting to know that we were part of the first one. We had talked to the two of you back at Media Day about this all-access game and how fun, especially with this matchup between St. John's and Seton Hall, because it's a great rivalry, and you do have a lot of the same players who have grown up playing against one another. So how unique is it for this rivalry to get the all-access game? I think that's what makes it special. I mean, we have so much respect for St. John's and how will they do. And, I mean, look at all the success Joe's had and obviously Kim before him. But, you know, it's a great game because, you know, it, it's it's – it's the biggest, I think, the biggest rivalry in the Big East. I mean, we're close to each other. We recruit a lot of the same players. We're both really competitive teams. Um, we're competitive coaches. And I, I just love playing them because of who they are and what they've bought and the bar they've raised that we have to, you know, make sure we, you know, do our best to be competitive. Yeah, I think, I mean, every every game you play is in a league, in, in league play is, is pretty – I would say competitive, contentious, um, you know, there, there's going to be days where you're playing really well and days where you don't. And um, certainly when you've got an opportunity because of the way we play in our schedule, you're playing Friday, Sunday, the, the rhythm to that is very different as we've gone through the last few years. So when you've got a, uh, a little bit more time and, and you've got that bye week, especially against your travel partner, so to speak, in that week, you know, you're trying to make sure that, um, you know, everything is, is ready. It's in place. And, and certainly both teams know each other probably better than any team they're going to play because of that. So you've got more time to repair. You're not talking about maybe a day, a day and a half. So along with the, the proximity uh, of being able to know the players in most programs that obviously we've watched play over time, um, you know, along with others that are a part of that, uh, it certainly adds to that piece of the competitiveness. A ton of competition to look forward to. What else can everyone look forward to this Sunday? I think a great atmosphere. We're really promoting it. I know St. John's always brings a lot of fans, and it's going to be a really you know, be close to a sellout. We're excited for that. Um, you know, our, our administration is really pushing it really hard. I know, like I said, Joe's fans travel really well. I think you're going to see a lot of scoring. I mean, both these are two of the better scoring teams in the league. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, this is the halfway part of the year. So, you know, you want to finish it strong. I said this is the women's basketball game of the week. Um, you know, I, I really believe that. And, uh, you know, of the weekend, I should say. And um, it would be exciting for everyone. Yeah, I, I, and obviously, hopefully, at being at a 6.30 time, you know, that we've got uh, better viewership and, and being able to push through some of the things that may be on during the day. So, um, you know, as Tony said, it's not, you know, when you go there, it's uh, obviously a very um, unique atmosphere. And, and the, you know, the fans, are it's loud. People are on you. They, they pack it out. It's good. I mean, it, it's, so it's a great atmosphere to play in. Um, and so it'll be definitely an exciting game, obviously, with some – or we think with some pace – as Tony and I would believe, but, uh, but yeah, so I think that, uh, you know, it'll be an exciting game for people to see and, and hopefully I don't get, you know, bleep too much and you know, <laughs> nor does Tony or we, we're not, you know, on the court, uh, at, at all times. So no, but it's, it'll be good. I think, um, you know, again, it's a great matchup and, and it's a, it's a big game for obviously both teams and, 
you know, as we move forward in the league. So as Tony said, it's the halfway mark for both of us at this mm -hmm. point, because this is the, the last game of our kind of our round robin. Um, and then we continue to push on. So now it'll be an exciting. I think uh, fans will enjoy the style of play and hopefully the personalities that are involved. Well, back in 2016, it surely was extremely fun to watch you guys. Both of these coaches will be mic'd up at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time on FS1. Coach Tardamel and Coach Bazella, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Megan. You're watching Providence Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's bring it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Welcome back to Mulaney Gym here inside Alumni Hall. Just moments away from the start of the third quarter. Time to take a look at some of the key stats from the first half. It's the Friars trailing this one by five. And Megan, what really sticks out for you? I mean, it's right when you look at that last stat line. Providence's 15 turn turnovers to Butler's eight. That's one thing coming into this game that Coach Crowley did stress was taking care of the ball for his team. That's something that they need to clean up here in the second half. Yeah, turnovers have been an issue for the Friars. They average about 16 per game already at that mark, basically. So they're going to have to do a much better job of taking care of the basketball. But something for the Friars right now, they're only trailing by five as they've been pretty stout on the defensive end. They've been able to hold Butler to just nine of 29 shooting from the field and three of 11 from beyond the arc. Leading scorers so far for the Friars, Alyssa Geary with seven leading of the way. And here we go, hold on from left to right here and start the third quarter. And those roadblock jerseys, white numerals. It'll be Genesis Parker leading it off for Spolier, who missed some time in the first half with some foul trouble. She has two personal. Spolier now, kicks it back outside. Long range shot will not go for Bry. But another key rebound for Kat Strong. Strong pulls up for the jumper. And Baskerville able to haul in the rebound. Erlet Scott now will lead the point for Providence. Forces it to the outside. Webb for three, won't go. Baskerville tipping it to herself and able to get it to Scott. Comes up. Evan Bristow won't go. Spoiler there for Butler. Just no fryer underneath the basket right there to get another opportunity for them to go through it again in offense. Spoiler now curling around. Puts up a quick shot, won't go. Getting up for the rebound was Alyssa Geary. She'll push it forward for Bristow, off the glass and in, and one for the freshman. An opportunity for the old-fashioned three-point play. That'll put Evan Bristow at the line. Bristow now up to four points for the game. Average is about three per contest. We're still on the season, though, has had her struggles from the line. She is just 8 of 19 overall. That one rattles out. Spoiler there for the board. Parker looking over to Coach Godlewski. Looks like Geary challenging her up high. Around it comes now for Spoiler. They are definitely trying to get her more involved here in the second half. Strong trying to get through Baskerville and able to draw the contact in the lane that time. And that'll be Baskerville's first personal. So, so far, she's doing a nice job of staying out of foul trouble, but you can see the directive from Butler go right <laughs> at her. 
<laughs> and that's one thing, when you're looking at her, you can see the concentration on her face, how she's really paying attention, paying close attention to her feet positioning, to her hands positioning. She wants to play clean. That's one thing in talking with the Friar staff. She's aware of it. She's aware that she's been fouling more than she should be, so that's something that she puts a lot of pressure on herself. And she wants to be, she's a perfectionist. She wants to be as good as she can. Yeah, that was a tough one. Is doing a nice job of earning that contact with Cat Strong. And Butler will make its first change of the third quarter. Ada Caceres returns to action. And that'll be Erlet Scott bringing it up the floor. He's met this time by Parker. And it's going to be a backcourt violation. Off Again, some tough defense from Genesis Parker. Hardy now on her third school. Played some time at Virginia Tech and Cincinnati. You saw it right there, Mike. Genesis Parker is just dangerous on those one-on-one -on -one matchups. She's able to read you and get a hand in there. Very quick hands. Very short-footed as well. Here's Spolier for three. That one won't go. And Caceres tracks it down. Able to get it into Spolier. Floats it outside. Here's Torre for three, and she buries it. What a beautiful possession by the Dogs. Getting that offensive rebound, swinging it along for that open bucket. Now some tenacious D as well as they pressure the Friars up high. And that'll lead to a traveling violation. Coach Crowley not happy, or excuse me, a timeout. Looks like they almost got the travel. Looks like Coach Crowley was able to get that timeout before she moved the foot. Time for us to step aside for just a few moments. We'll be back with more from Providence right here on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi. You're watching Butler Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Big cities. Big names. Big legacies. Big sisters and brothers. Big ideas. Big expectations. Big stage. Big results. That's the Big East way. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. Welcome back once again to Providence. Take a look at some contact at the end of the first half. Andrea Cooper in the collision there with Genesis Parker. Came up kind of gimpy and saw her with a big bag of ice. She's been trying to go to the exercise bike, but has spent a lot of time with the trainer. Has not been able to come back yet as she was helped off the court at the end of that quarter. And that's really the last thing that the Friars need at this point as they already had two players in street clothes. Not just two players, but two of their starters, and Olivia Orlando and Kira Spiewak. Now the third of their four juniors going down with injury. A shortened bench gets a little bit shorter. As you see it right there, she was completely picked up and taken off the court. And Mike, to your point, that's something that you're losing another player that has had significant minutes, significant experience to bring to this younger roster who's able to kind of level out the playing field when things are getting a little bit out of hand there. So, but it's been next man up mentality for this Friars team all season. And they have been able to weather the storm with how they have been responding to adversity. But anytime a player goes out, it's an opportunity for another player to step up. Coach Crowley looking to see who that player is going to be. Here's Spolier losing her footing and she can't buy a call today. Her frustrating night continues. 
As the Friars try to make good on the other end. Erlen Scott to the rack and in. Strong take that time by the sophomore out of Brooklyn. Spolier will give it up to Parker. As the Bulldogs will be methodical again on the offensive end. Torre. Give it up to Caceres. And now Spolier curling around again. Outside for Bry. Too strong on the three. And another rebound for Erlet Scott. Bristow gets into the paint. Big jump stepping in. And the Friars with new life. How about that from Bristow with a little bit of moves there. Goes up and around a defender. Some of the Friars were high on coming into the season. Steadily seen her minutes increase. And they've needed her. Oh, rejection on the other end. Mary Baskerville saying, not so fast to Casares. Big smile for Kayla Webb as well. Here's Scott for three. Too strong. And then a foul on the rebound attempt. And they're going to get Casares for the personal. And she got tangled up with Bristow, but... A little bit of injection of new life for Heaven Bristow and the Friars. Yeah, this Friars team, oh, as you see right here. I see some of the contact there. Mm. Not a ton. Geary on the perimeter. Swings it out for Scott. Now skips it back. Geary for three. That one's short all the way. Spoyer races it up the floor. Outside for Parker. Coach Godlewski giving him the go, 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 get moving. Here's Caceres from the outside. And it won't go that time. Kayla Webb the other way. Scott now. Floats it on over for Webb. Little stutter step now gives it off to Bristow. Around for Scott. Bristow. Bounces off Caceres and then went a little bit too hard for the rebound that time as she collided with Bry. She put it up and went directly <laughs> for the rebound there. She knew that wasn't going in. Yeah, she knew right away, but uh, can't go through the player and try to hit that ball. And get another look here. Good aggressive take, the little bounce off of Caceres and then trying to get to that loose ball colliding with Bry. And she put her hand up right after that saying, I know. Uh, yep, my bad. <laughs> so already nearing the midway point of the third quarter. Butler looking to extend its four-point lead. A two-so strong move to the hoop. And Cooper, who had checked back in, absorbed the contact but picks up the personal. Didn't even see him sneak her in there. Talk about trying to gut it out. Mm. It could have gone either way, perhaps, but this yeah. time going in favor of a two-so. I don't think her feet were quite set on that right there, getting all that contact. A two-so makes good on the first. Two-so now five points on the night. Make it six. Friars trying to break this press again. They get it up to Webb. As Butler mixing and matching some different defenses. This time picking it off as Parker. 2 on one break with Spolier to the rim. No good. Lee was able to get back. But Parker able to keep the possession alive for Butler. Matuso. Now they'll reset out high with Parker. Spolier in motion. Comes out high. Around comes Strong, looking for Spolier on the inside, and does not have that scoring touch tonight, at least not yet. It's just not swinging her way right there. She's getting the opportunities, but they're just a little too hard, a little too soft here and there. Lee now, with Geary calling for it, wanted it out high, but said they'll work it through Erlet Scott. Webb now rifles it in. Geary has it punched away from behind as Cat Strong able to get a hand on it. Parker will walk it up the floor this time. She gives it off to Spolier. Caceres. And now Parker once again drops it in for Spolier. A little turnaround jumper is good. 
There we go. That If you're Spolier, that's what you want to see. Before that, she only had five points. A, a lower scoring night for her. Well, Spolier, one of the top scorers in the Big East, third in that department at 19.2 per contest. A number of touch higher in Big East play at 19.6. Here's Fatima Lee, kick out. Kayla Webb hits the three ball. The much needed points for the Friars. Again, makes it a five point game. A two so, Caceres, and now Strong. Quick ball movement here by the Bulldogs. Strong little pull up, and that one smooth. Another bucket for Cat Strong. Melissa Geary now with the handle. Looking for a cutting Cooper. Back out for Geary. Webb was set up in the corner, and Geary bumped a couple of times and will be at the line after this break. There should be a timeout coming up here with 2.51 left in the third quarter. Friars down by seven. We'll be back with more right here on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi. You're watching Providence Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you yeah. people can tell me to stop. Two fifty-one left here in the third quarter. The Bulldogs enjoying a seven-point lead. Uh, Mike Mancuso joined tonight by Megan Caffrey as we look ahead now for the Bulldogs of what they've got coming up. And of course, this is the front end of one of the toughest trips in the Big East. The Providence Creighton swing doesn't get any further apart than that. And then you look the rest of their schedule. They'll have a couple of home games as well. A little three-game homestand coming up with Xavier, Georgetown, and Villanova coming to visit Hinkle Fieldhouse. Of course, for the Friars, they will be hosting Xavier on Sunday afternoon. Catch that game on FS2, a 1 o'clock start from here at Mullaney Gym. And then they will hit the road next weekend for a, a tough swing against Marquette and DePaul. So it doesn't get any easier for the Friars. But again, there are no easy games in the Big East. There never really are. You talk to any head coach in the Big East, and that's exactly what they say. The Marquette DePaul road swing has always tended to be one of the harder ones in the Big East. But I think for this Providence team, they're home this weekend after the first time since the beginning of January. January 5th was the Friars' last home game. So this is a really warm, welcomed homestand for them. It's actually funny. In talking with a couple of the Friars before this game, I was asking Mary Baskerville, how nice is it to get back into your routine, your home? And she laughed and she said, I don't even think I remember what my normal routine is because I'm so used to being on the road. Yeah, they had a long stretch. No home games in the month of December for the Friars. As Alyssa Geary steps up to the line. That is something, however, as a young team, getting tested on the road is something that's going to make you better down the line. So, yes, the Friars have been on the road. They haven't had as much success as they would have wanted to. But these players are getting these road experiences at such a young age that that is going to make them even more of a threat. And, and it wasn't a surprise. It was mm -hmm. deliberately done yes. by the coaching staff. Coach Crowley making a point to want to get these young players tested mm -hmm. as he figures, you know, that this year was, it was going to be a, a tough one, even though they brought back a lot of talent, but you're working in a lot of new faces. And uh, 
you know, they give them those games on the road. Certainly a, a different kind of atmosphere and a different kind of test. The Bulldogs going back to work here on the offensive end. Cat Strong left it short. Geary trying to get down and low on the hardwood. Rolls it over to Scott. And a nice job of not picking up the travel by Alyssa Geary. Here's Williams showing a little B-button. Turbo gets it to Cooper who can't finish. And last touch there on the baseline by Shea Bride. So it will stay with the Friars. Geary gets a well-deserved rest. In comes Baskerville and Heaven Bristow as Arlett Scott checks out as well for the Friars. And you have to love seeing Cooper go in for those rebounds, really aggressive, not, not looking tentative at all after going down earlier. Webb stumbling but able to hold on, and Williams able to draw some contact. Leave our furry friends in attendance here. <laughs> now that is what I like to see. Now if he could only come over here and hang out with us. <laughs> we can maybe get that arranged between periods as Baskerville <laughs> converts on the inside. Friars climb a little bit closer, making it a four-point game. With under two minutes to go. And again, you look at that 0-7 in Big East play mark for the Friars, but they have been in basically every mm -hmm. single game. They've just been looking for that full 40-minute effort. Today, obviously, a little bit tougher without two starters, but I'll tell you what, this Providence team has come to play here at home. Mike, to your point with that, the Friars either led or were tied with their opponent at half with 13 of their 19 games coming into that. So, to your point, they have been in these games. I just wonder for the Friars if they could finally get that first Big East win. Could it kind of have that snowball effect and get them rolling. I mean, this team was picked tied for fifth coming into the season based on who they were returning as Williams can't quite connect. And then Cooper got tangled up with Spoyer and will pick up another personal foul. And though this season has bent the Friars a little bit, they haven't broken from this. I mean, in watching them in shoot around today, this team, the positivity that they have, the energy that they have, they are all teammates who are really bought in to one another and bought into what they're doing as a program. So they are going to be better because of this. We'll see what they could do on this defensive stand. Under a minute left in the third. Bray on the inside, too strong. Baskerville the rebound. And here comes Chanel Williams. Williams loves to play with pace in there, drags the foot. And another costly turnover has really been the Achilles heel for the Friars. Turnover number 20 on the night. And again, it's kind of those unforced turnovers mm -hmm. that really kill you and really get you as a coach. And you can see it right there, there, Coach Crowley kind of put his head in his hands right there with that. It's just a little bit of inexperience there, playing a little bit too fast for herself. And an offensive foul is doing battle in the paint was Kat Strong and Mary Baskerville. And they're going to get Strong for the offensive foul. So the Friars could basically hold for the rest of this quarter here. Only a .6 second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. We'll take another look at the, con the contact in the paint. And didn't seem to be a ton there, but looks like their feet might have just got tangled a little bit and then a little bit of a push from Strong. It looked like a little bit of the, the tangled feet underneath her and, and Baskerville was behind Strong on there. So as she's backing up, it just seemed a little trip up, but they got her. The Butler is not going to make things easy here for the Friars. They had the full press going on for a few moments there. Made the Friars earn their trip up the floor. Williams will hold for about 10 seconds. The Friars have the floor spread to her left. Baskerville and Scott to her right. Cooper and Webb. Webb now coming off the curling screen. Can't connect. Spoiler the rebound. Can she get the shot off in time? No, she can't. That would not have counted. And we are 30 minutes in. Butler with a four-point lead. Don't go away. We'll be back with the fourth quarter from Providence. This is the Big East Digital Network presented by SoFi. You're watching Butler Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. All right, we got to be all in. All in, all right? And we got to make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right, we've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. 
Because what we are, we are one. Let's pray. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Alumni Hall, getting close to crunch time. It's been a tight one through and through. Neither team really able to break away. The Friars, after trailing by seven at the end of the first quarter, have actually outscored Butler in the last two quarters, 14 to 12 and then 12 to 11. They've really done a nice job on the defensive end, holding Butler to just 26% from the field. And they have held Butler without a bucket for the last three minutes of that quarter, Mike. So they are really, they're playing smart defense. And they're trying to get as many of those stops that they that they can to be chipping away at this. And the Friars will have the opening possession of the fourth quarter. It'll be Williams, Cooper, Scott, Geary, and Baskerville for the Friars. Spoyer, Parker, Strong, Torre, and Bry out there for the Bulldogs. Scott. Flip it out to Williams, a streaking Baskerville. Just couldn't connect, but what a nicely developed play. Coach Crowley happy with the execution. The finish just wasn't quite there for Baskerville. Strong. We'll leave it off for Spolier. Parker now surveys the scene, has Bry. Bry trying to take Geary, leaves it out for Strong. Long range J won't go. Poked out ahead for Williams. Three on two break for the Friars if they hurry. Williams looking for Cooper. Got into some trouble on the baseline as Williams went down. And now the Friars will reset out high with Erlet Scott. Williams, and now Geary. Tied for the team lead with Baskerville with eight points each. And a high arcing rainbow that time from Erlet Scott. Brings the Friars within two. Man, was that nice. She knew she had it there. One little dribble, put it up nice and easy. See how the Bulldogs respond. It's now been over four minutes of game time without a point. They go to Torre. Torre left it short. Second chance, won't go. Poked out to Baskerville. And the Providence D holds again. And how about Geary on there? Played really clean underneath the basket to not get fouled. Geary now looking at a three ball, puts it up and in! Alyssa Geary feeling it, and the Friars retake the lead. And you saw her smile a little bit after that. You knew she was happy that that went in. Her second made three of the game. She's been working on that long distance shot. It's paying off here so far tonight. Butler now facing some adversity. They go to Spolier. Lost the handle, Baskerville flying for it. Tipped ahead, down to five on the shot clock. Spolier puts up a wild one and doesn't get it to go. And another rebound for Cooper. Yes, Chanel Williams right down the lane, flings it up. No, nope. that one won't go as Bry comes away with it. Excellent execution by her, just a little too much power behind it. Strong on the inside and one as she draws the contact with Baskerville. Bulldogs back on top by one. Baskerville just a little bit late getting back that time. 
that is the second personal on Baskerville, who's done a nice job tonight of staying out of foul trouble. Kayla Webb back in now for Providence. Out goes Chanel Williams. Parker out for the Bulldogs as Caceres returns. And Mike, it's really interesting with these Providence guards as they sub in and out for one another with Kayla and Shanta, with just their differences that they bring to the floor. One being a little bit slower, reading the offense better. Another one quick, fiery. Scott got caught in a little bit of trouble down low, turned it over, then pokes it away. Spolier able to handle the loose ball. And now they'll reset with Torre. One point game, Torre can't get it to drop. And now Geary will hustle it ahead. To the corner it goes for Webb. Back for Geary. He's looking for Baskerville. But Caceres couldn't come up with it. Webb says, I'll take the open three, but unable to deliver that time. Caceres waiting for both Strong and Bry. Who Bry was a little slow to get up there. She, she took a fall and was looking for a call. Strong high off the glass, won't go. And Cooper has it poked away, but it'll stay with the Friars. Kevin Bristow checking back in for Providence. Lupe Atuso back in for Butler. As looks like Mary Baskerville is going to get a quick break. And Cat Strong as well for the Bulldogs. Friars looking to regain the lead. Had five lead changes already tonight. Yeah, neither team able to break free. Bristow pulled up her dribble, now has Scott. High arcing three is good. Erlet Scott from downtown, and the Friars up by two. Torre leaving off for Spoyer. Spoyer, Caceres. Atusu won't go. Nice rebound, though, by Torre. Puts it up and draws the contact. I believe they're going to get Bristow for the personal. How about that? <laughs> Just so much confidence in her shot. And again, Coach Crowley getting them to just not overthink it. Mm -hmm. Catch, shoot. Yep. They've done it a million times in their lives. Just, you know, go back to some of the basics. And some of the games where they've been close down the stretch, you could feel it where they just start tightening up. They start overthinking it a little bit. So far here in the fourth quarter, they seem to be a little bit looser. Mm -hmm. And you can tell with their body language, it's it's clear as day. They're not, they're not tight. They're not holding things. They're playing loosely. Now the question is, can they keep it up for the final mm -hmm. five minutes and 45 seconds as we are all even at 40 again? We said the last three games have gone to overtime. Last year here in Providence, triple overtime. <laughs> Will we have an extra frame or two tonight? Friars throw it away as Torre is able to get to it. Spolier tries to drive baseline and just runs out of real estate. Erlet Scott with the handle. Now Alyssa Geary down the lane, had it ripped away by Torre. And I'd have to imagine Butler's going to slow it down on this possession. Things getting a little too helter-skelter out there. Indeed, that is what Rumu Torre is going to do. Butler set the, excuse me, Baskerville set the check back in the next opportunity. Caceres sealed off by Cooper. Spolier from the outside, won't go. Shot just not there for Kristen Spolier tonight. And Bry just wasn't boxing out. She wasn't really there to get that offensive rebound, so got that fire. Poked away and then kicked out of bounds by Scott. And that'll bring us to a break in the action here in Providence. I think all the players out there need one as well. We're knotted up at 40, and we'll be back with more from Friartown. This is the Big East on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi. You're watching Providence Women's Basketball on Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic.
big cities. Big names. Big legacies. Big sisters and brothers. Big ideas. Big expectations. Big stage. Big results. That's the Big East way. We're all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. And welcome back again to Mulaney Gym. 40-40 with 4.39 left in the fourth quarter. And if tonight is any indication of what we might get later on this year, particularly in the Big East Tournament, it should be an amazing tournament. You can make sure to get your tickets now at BigEast.com slash WBB tickets. Of course, it'll be at the Wintrust Arena in Chicago for the third year in a row. Get your tickets now. Set those plans for March 6th through the 9th for some and amazing basketball action. And pack your winter jackets because <laughs> that time in Chicago is quite cold. But the great thing is with where the tournament is held in Wintrust and the hotel that a lot of the teams stay at that the Big East will stay at. You can just you can stay inside the entire way. You go over the walkway, you're in a tunnel. It's nice. When I was there last year, I don't think I saw the outsider experience <laughs> the cold one bit that week. <laughs> yeah, March, early March, uh, yes. A little bit chilly out in that Chicago area. So here we go. Butler trying to break a 40-40 tie. Torre, Orcaceres. Bry on the outside now. As they look on the inside, we get a little bit of a touch foul. Something we haven't seen too much of here tonight. They've really let them play. I think it's going to go against Erlet Scott. That's just the third team foul on the Friars. Also the third personal on Scott. It's no foul shots. Ken Butler, one of the best in the nation in converting free throws. And that time, Geary not leaving it the chance. It's going to make sure that Shea Bride did not convert on that layup. Yeah, Geary was all over there with that contact. And Butler at this point just looking for some points. It's been a while since they have scored well over three minutes of game time. Missed their last four shots from the field and finally get a point. Was Bry able to convert? Bry on the season, perfect in Big East play until that one. That converted all her free throws. Extended pressure here out of the Bulldogs defensively. Kayla Webb, though, has a big screen set by Geary, just wiped out Spolier. She seems okay. The Friars wound up turning it over for the 25th time tonight. They had 23 in the loss against Seton Hall, 25 tonight. Find themselves down by one. Three ball on the way is pure. Umu Torre, a huge bucket to put Butler up on top by four. Robin is going to call timeout, talk things over. We're going to keep it here as Butler uh, on a little bit of a run now, 6-0 run over the last two minutes. As now it's the Friar struggling to find a way to materialize some points. Four turnovers for the Friars in just under two and a half minutes. As we see that from distance from Torre, that was just beautiful, as many people would say. But, uh, you know, turnovers continue to be the issue for the Friars, as we're seeing right now. And, and a lot of them are coming from as these players are. You see Geary in a couple times, she's driving towards the basket and, and just tries to put it up and gets blocked versus getting that open kick out. You've got your open players out on the outside. Find your, your man there. And now we'll see if the Friars can kind of maintain that confidence they had built earlier and play with that looseness. Baskerville blocked on the inside by Caceres. Bry coming up with the loose ball. And the fourth personal on Erlet Scott. 
And that more of a frustration foul, I mm -hmm. think, for Scott. However, that is also the Friars' fifth team foul. So Butler will be shooting the rest of the way. And this is really where the Bulldogs are at their best, is at the line, especially in late game situations. And you could just see the frustration on Erlich Scott's face after that foul. McBride did a nice job kind of yep. poking it out away from Baskerville. And Two hands on her head, just a lot of frustration. That's not what you want as you're coming down the stretch. Well, she knows it's her fourth as well, mm -hmm. and they can't yep. afford to lose any players here tonight. Friars struggling a little bit with the press this time. Going to have to hurry to get it across the timeline. They do. Cooper. Well, for Scott, now for Geary up high. Webb thought about three, now leaves it for Scott. She'll hoist it up. Too strong. Baskerville couldn't come up with it. And Torre and the Bulldogs now slowly kind of imposing their will on this game. And we've got seven lead changes up to this point. The Bulldogs a chance to go up by eight or possibly nine. Oh, big collision underneath the hoop, and they're going to get a blocking foul on Baskerville. Getting the worst end of that for sure was Upe Atuso. And she was flying down the baseline. And stepping in her way was Baskerville. Take another look. Strong move there, and just boom. Baskerville just a hair late. And getting into position, and Tuso, a junior from Nigeria, certainly in some pain. And you can see in the replay right there when she went down, her, her leg kind of went in a little bit of a, you could tell from her facial expression that she just didn't fall on that leg the way that she wanted to. So with this break in the action here in Providence, we're going to step aside for just a few moments. We'll be back with more from Mulaney Jim here in Friartown. You're watching Providence Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. So Upe Atuso having to check out of the game with injury in to shoot the free throws right off the bench. Amelia Sexton misses on the first, but a chance to give Butler a seven point edge. It's time whittling away here. Genesis Parker back in now for the Bulldogs. And we'll see how the Friars respond down by seven. Points have been hard to come by for both sides tonight. Erlet Scott working against Spolier. Skips it around for Geary. Got the defender to drop. Baskerville to the rim and draw some contact. Baskerville will have a chance to at least cut the lead down by a couple of points. We'll take another look. You saw the little bump that time from Ida Caceres. Yeah, Caceres, great job with her hands up there, but just a little bit too much over, too much contact. And here's an area where Baskerville certainly been working on her game, making these free throws and pressure situations. As you know, teams are not going to make it easy for her. Comes up with one of two. And a key rebound that time for Caceres. Butler now a little bit of a luxury with a six-point lead to be more deliberate and methodical with this possession. Torre. Caceres now faced up against Baskerville. Down to seven on the shot clock. Parker. Torre trying to shake, shake free of Cooper, and Baskerville was able to get to it. Kayla Webb now leaves it for Scott, and gets it to go. 
great job by Webb, finding her teammate underneath. That's how you finish. Nice, clean pass to Scott. Up for two. Four-point ball game with under two minutes to play. Genesis Parker working against Webb. What's got left? <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> Everybody in the gym heard him that time. Oh, yeah. Spolier, a left-handed shot, won't go. And again, she cannot buy any kind of contact today. And to make matters worse for the Bulldogs, another foul against Bry. But that will stop the clock with 1.33 left. It's only the second team foul. So the Friars won't be shooting quite yet. Kayla Webb, Scott in motion. Now Geary checking two. They go high to Baskerville, quickly double teamed on the inside. Kicks it out for Scott. Three ball on the way is good. Wow, have yourself a day or let Scott. One point game. And Butler's gonna call timeout. The Friar Fanatics are fired up. Here's another look at that three ball from Erlet Scott. Is letting it fly from the perimeter. Again, the Friars able to cut it to one with just one ten left here in the fourth quarter. You're watching Butler Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you people yeah. can tell me to stop. Six zero run by the Friars over the last minute and 26 seconds to close the gap to just one. Is trying to get that first Big East win of the season. Butler trying to hang on for dear life at this point. Here's Spolier. Parker now. 10 on the shot clock. Torre back for Caceres. Caceres trying to make something happen, and she does. What a spin move in the lane. Got right past Baskerville to put it up. Erlet Scott brings it back the other way and is Hacked on the way in by Shea Bry. Stopping the clock again with 42.8 seconds. Could have been on Spolier as well. It'll push from behind. Either way, it's going to go down as the third on Bry. Big Scott at the line. Chance for some freebies with the clock stopped. Bryer's knee. Too strong, though, on the first. Scott so far tonight, leading the Friars with 12 points. And pushes it up to 13. And a timeout called by Butler. Coach Godlewski wants to talk things over and advance the ball as well on the timeout. So 42.8 seconds left. A two-point lead for Butler to play with. So we'll see what they cook up coming out of the timeout. The question is, who do you go to if you're Butler at this point? Spolier obviously is usually the number one choice, but she's just two of 14 on the night and one of six from the perimeter. I think you maybe try and get it to Torre. You look at her right now, she's leading the team in points and she has been efficient from the perimeter, shooting three of four from three point range. So maybe, you know, if she's got the hot hand from three, if you have an open look, that's the most important thing at the end of the day. You don't want to just, when you're coming down here, down the stretch, you don't want to just put a bucket up to put a bucket up. At this point, you still want good shots, so work it. Don't work the shot clock too much, but work it till you find that, that open look. So it's about a almost 13 second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. So the Friars can hold here in terms of not fouling right away in hopes that they'll get another possession. But what deficit will they be facing? Here's Torre. Bry getting Caceres in motion. Puts it up from long range, won't go. 
And Torre able to keep it in. What an offensive rebound here. Spoyer off the glass, no good. Baskerville and the Friars will have an opportunity with 10 seconds left. Coach Godlewski is beside himself saying, why would you take that shot? The shot clock was off with Spoyer. She's an aggressive player. She's gonna try to make things happen. This time, it's coming up empty. And it's just been that kind of night for her. Now two of 15 from the field. And as she made that drive, you could see Genesis Parker outside, wide open, nobody on her. Maybe you have to kick it out there. Genesis can make something happen on that play. But how about the takeaway there with Torre putting in her entire effort to get that. It looked like she almost got, we could kind of see it in the corner from our view, but she got beat up a little bit on that one. Well, and just <laughs> the agility to stay yeah. in bounds. I mean, she was literally like a millimeter from stepping out of bounds. Phenomenal body control to keep it alive. And now for the Friars, 10 seconds. Got a couple of options out there for sure. Scott's had the hot hand here in the second half. He always got the go-to player in Baskerville. Kayla Webb's been a little on and off here tonight. Melissa Geary's had a fantastic game. And now remember also, Butler does have a foul to give. So how will they choose to use that? If they can get a good four or five seconds to go off before they can get that foul, see what they decide to do. Erlette Scott with inbounding duties. Kayla Webb trying to check two. Flips it in, and it's read by Bry. A 26 turnover of the night. And that'll do the Friars in. As there's just .7 seconds left. And Torre heading to the line for the Bulldogs. How about this? defensive effort that we're seeing from Butler. They're second in the Big East, averaging just over 10 and a half steals per game. They've got 15 on tonight. Well, Providence still might have a chance. <laughs> They'll have to get a rebound here and chuck it the length of the court. A three-point deficit. Coach Crowley's going to call timeout to draw something up. Uh, what a tough break, though, for the Friars, and particularly Erlet Scott, who played so well in the second half, but a tough inbounds pass. And it's read well by Bry. Mm -hmm. She was able to anticipate it, saw where it was going. The intended target was Geary, and Bry just beating her to the ball. That was great defense by the Bulldogs. You could see them that as they they were going in, they're double teaming, they were, they were quick, they were moving their feet, they were playing clean. That's the type of defense you need coming down the stretch. We'll see what Providence is able to draw up. Just 0.7 seconds, so could perhaps have time to catch and even turn around before flinging it up. And here we go, Geary will be inbounding the ball after this timeout called by Butler. And Coach Godlewski figuring, well, you can't take the timeouts with you. Might as well see what Providence is going to draw up. Get a good look at it and try to draw something to counter. Now it's back to the drawing board as the chess match continues between Coach Crowley and Coach Godlewski. Do the Friars have a magical moment within them here? And I think the positive takeaways for both of these teams after tonight is just the level of aggression and how much all of these players stepped up to it, to their names being called tonight. There was, everyone was just putting their best on the court. You saw players not normally having come in, step up, get big minutes. So we'll see what we get here out of the break. Coach Kotlewski, a little smile on his face. But you know he's got to be, <laughs> I mean, his heart beat a million times a minute right now. Take a sip of water, calm down a second. <laughs> Needs his Bulldogs to come up with one more stop. So here we go. And a misconnection there with Samson. And I don't know, 
they're going to say that it was never touched, so it never technically came in. So I think they will have one more inbounds play before this one ends. It'll be for the Bulldogs, however, as the Friars threw it out of bounds. Cat Strong just needs to get this one in play. And there it is. And now it's a final. So the Bulldogs come out on top. A hard fought victory on the road, 50 to 47. They improved to 13 and 6 overall, 5 and 3 in the Big East. For the Friars, they dropped their eighth in a row. They fall to 9 and 11, 0 and 8. As they'll still be looking for their first Big East win of the season this Sunday against Xavier. Time for us to step aside for just a few moments. We'll be back with more from Providence right here on the Big East Digital Network. Presented by SoFi. excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're going to work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together. This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with the victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. And welcome back once again to Mulaney Gym here inside Alumni Hall in Providence. Final score, Butler 50, Providence 47. We're now joined by one of the stars of the game today, Umu Torre. You had 14 points to lead your team in what was a gritty, hard-fought road victory. What do you think was the biggest key to success here tonight? I just think we needed to keep our composure. We we could have let them, their, them getting a lead come and like bite us in the butt, but we, we kept our composure and we were in it. How were you able to keep your composure, especially from three-point land? You were really efficient from beyond the arc. What was working for you? Uh, my teammates just got me the ball. I was open. They trusted me to knock, that, knock it down. And as you look ahead now, you have kind of the ominous trip all the way out to face Creighton in this tough Providence Creighton road swing. What's the mentality now, and how much do you take out of a victory like you had here tonight? I mean, we got to take it day by day. We still have a big game against Creighton. We're still looking forward to getting all the way to Nebraska. I've never been. <laughs> and trying to go and get a road win up there. Well, congratulations again on the victory. Outstanding performance tonight. That was Umu Torre of the Butler Bulldogs, who improve again to 13-6 and six on the season, 5-3 and three in Big East play. And that'll pretty much do it for us here in Providence. On behalf of our entire hardworking Big East Digital Network team and my broadcast partner, Megan Caffrey, I'm Mike Mancuso saying good night from Friartown.